Hi, it's Vex, and today we do another deck tech. That's right. We are doing a deck tech on Galea, Kindler of Hope, one of the adventures of Forgotten Realm, face commander cards. I know they're commanders with every set now. It's hard to keep up. But I've never actually really made an aura deck, and it actually helps that this is an aura equipment deck. So let's actually read Galea. One green, white, blue, so one bant. Legendary creature, elf knight. Every time I look at the picture, I keep thinking this is a um, a cat, but it's not. Elf Knight. Uh, Vigilance, so that's good. Helps you attack and block with your equipment and auras. The cool part is you may look at the top card of your library anytime. Cool. Peek, peek, peek. Then you may cast aura and equipment spells from the top of your library. And the cool part is when you cast an equipment spell this way, only from the top of your library using this ability, it gains when this equipment enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Wow. So it gets, gets the, the auto-equip clause, which helps saves on mana, gives you a card advantage. Look, look at the top of your library, uh, which, you know, it's like, it's like drawing a free card and playing it. Uh, it's not exactly as cool as drawing a free card because it doesn't go in your hand, and then you can't wait for a long time, you know, not a long time, uh, later to play it. You, so what this deck asks you to do is ask you to do three things. Basically, play auras, play equipments. You can play either auras or equipments or a hybrid of them. And, and wants you to also, you know, manipulate the top of your deck a little bit. Um, I, I guess you don't need to manipulate the top of your deck, but it's more fun that way because you, you want to gain all that value. So, auras, the reason I've stayed, stayed away from auras, and I typically have more equipment, uh, as you can see on my deck text, is auras are usually two-for-ones. So the way I built this deck is to minimize two-for-ones, either have auras cantrip, auras act as removal on the opponents, auras go on things that are hard to remove, like lands and such. There are some auras that you can get two-for-one for, but... Galea helps you um, recover that by lets you play a top, let, um, lets you cast it from the top of your deck. So it kind of mitigates a two for one deal by giving you the extra card boost, card draw, and Galea is a four four. Really good. Equip Galea with plus three plus zero, like a uh, Lex and Warhammer, which is not in the deck, but you know, get get her power up to seven. Bam, attack three times, and commander damage. All right, so let's check out what's in the deck. And I usually do it by types of cards, but I'll do it by, um, I mean, category of cards. I'll do it by types. First, we'll actually go after the auras here. So this does have a mixture of auras and equipment and support cards that support both auras and equipment you mostly. Some support, some you know, like Stoneforge Mystics in this deck are uh, for equipments only, but mostly most of the cards are for auras and equipments. And I, I love how they have those um that wording now uh, on some cards like you know aura like Shram has if an aura and equipment ETB draw cards, stuff like that. Alright, let's get to it. From Call Time, we have these cool rune cards, and I love these rune cards a lot because, as I said before, we want to mitigate these uh, card disadvantage of an aura. Because if you place an aura on Galea without a cantrip and it, Galea dies, you just lose, you know, two, they, they two for ones you. So we have Rune of Might. These are cantripping runes from Call Time. So Rune of Might, Rune of Flight, and Rune of Substance, the Bant runes. And the cool part is Enchant Permanent. Uh, Right, so you can pick you can chant a land if you want to. It doesn't do anything if you chant a land, but you can. And basically, they all cantrip, and it says as long as chant permanent is a creature, it gets plus one plus zero and has trample. All right, so get plus one plus I mean sorry plus one plus one and trample. And then as long as chant permanent is an equipment, it the equipment has equipped creature gets plus one plus one and has trample. So essentially, it grants the same thing. Uh, so it kind of let, lets you enchant an equipment and gives the equipment a boost to the creature that's wearing the equipment. So it's really cool. It cantrips. Uh, worst case, if you don't have a, a creature or an equipment, you could just enchant a land and just get the cantrip. So that is super cool. This one essentially does the same thing, except for just gives flying. Ruin of Substance does the same thing, except for lifelink. So it's really cool. Mitigates card disadvantage. There is a uh, a time window if you're like casting the rune, casting the aura right here as it's on the stack, and the creature is is uh, getting ready to get enchanted. However, they destroy the creature, so the enchantment has nothing to go on to, so that, was, that is a two-for-one. And that is a window for the cantrip to actually fail there. But if you want a really guaranteed cantrip, you could just enchant land, because, you know, the very few land destruction spells right there. Uh, our ramp package is mostly in the mana. Uh, I mean, in, in, the, uh, in the aura uh, category. So we're playing less Farseek, less uh, ramp and growth. We're actually playing very little spells, because we have to make room for all these auras and all these equipment. But, it, you know, it's kind of cool to have a little change of pace and say only oh, playing Kadama's Reach and stuff, so we have abundant growth. This isn't technically a ramp, but fixes your colors, and it does a cantrip, too. And it's very cheap, 
So it's on top of your deck like this. You can take a peek and you're like, oh, let's see what's it. Oh, abundant growth. So you just play it, cantrip, bam. So you just draw a card. So it's card advantage, double card advantage. You get the card advantage of this and the card that it gives you right there. Utopia Sprawl is a, uh, um, a mana ramp. Gives you extra mana. Enchant Forest, though. You gotta remember that. It has to be a forest. Let's move these out of the way here. Wild Growth, right? Enchant Land gives you extra green. So slightly different. Utopia Sprawl gives you extra color of your choice, but you have to enchant Forest. This gives you extra green, but you can enchant anything. Fertile Ground. Uh, add add extra color of mana, right there. Wolf Little Haven, add extra green. And remember, these are auras. They they chant lands, but they're still auras. Uh, add extra green and tap land for mana, and then you make a little wolf by sacking the Wolf Little Haven. So it's cool. We also want our removal to be uh, primarily auras. So what we want to do is again put this on top of your deck, peek at it, like oh it's an aura. I could play it on an opponent's creature. And you know what? Even even if the opponent's creature dies while I'm playing this card, it did its job. It just got rid of the creature, so I don't worry. Really have to worry about the card disadvantage of auras there. We have Imprison in the Moon again. Creature land or Planeswalker. You can disable a bunch of things. Enchant Permanent. This is it's just a waste. <laughs> Canvas Transformation. I love this. This is a cantripping uh, Elker. So you ETB cantrip and then turns something into an Elk. So you turn somebody's commander into an Elk. They can't put it in the command zone. Actually, I really like these cards here. Right there, these three removal spells, one each color, of course. Um, it, they can be put on commanders, make them lose all abilities, and and then you can't replay the commander since they don't go back to the command zone, just sit in the battlefield and just chill. We have other auras, value auras, I call these. These aren't technically the ones that can trip or are hard to remove the permanent. Like once, once you enchant a land over here, uh, people will usually go after your lands. Here, you enchant creature. They do go after your creature, but it's worth it. Aqueous form makes it makes creatures unblockable. So you want to equip your commander, Voltron up your commander, make him unblockable. Rancor is uh, you know plus two plus zero and trample again good on your commander. It does come back. Um, so when Rancor is put in the graveyard from battlefield, return Rancor to its owner's hand. There is a window where Rancor doesn't work, but once you play the creature, if the creature dies, Rancor just goes right to back to your hand. Perfect. Right there, Umbras. So I have two Umbras. I I, I got the two cheap Umbras. There's lots of other Umbras that you could use, but this is cool because it helps protect your creature. It's got flash, that's why. Uh, so this creature's about to die, you can flash in the Umbra, save the creature, lose the Umbra with uh, Totem Armor. So Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one, Totem Armor. To totem Armor does, the Enchanted Creature would be destroyed. Instead, remove all damage from it and destroy this aura. So you just, essentially this aura puts a little armor around your, your dude. We have Snake Umbra. This is only one of two Umbras. Plus one, plus one has... Uh, Whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card, so a little card advantage there. So it has built-in card advantage by protecting your creature that you're, you put it on, and then draw some cards. Another enhancement to your creature is Steel of the God, Godhead, right here. So this is a uh, you know, risky aura, you know, as long as the enchanted creature is white, it gets plus one, plus one, is lifelink. And the important part is here is as long as the enchanted creature is blue, it gets plus one, plus, plus one, and is unblockable. Galea is all, th all you know, th bad colors, and white and blue. Put on here, Galea becomes 6-6 six, six, uh, unblockable lifelink. Pretty sweet with Vigilance here. You enhance Galea some more, get up to 11, do two hit kill, two turn kill with commander damage. I love commander damage. Take that life gain dex. Question authority. This makes it super unblockable because when ETBs draw cards, so again, I, I try to find a lot of draw cards. I know some don't have draw cards like a like Aqueous Form, like Aqueous Form, I guess, Steal of the Godhead. These just make it unblockable, so it just helps end the game quicker. But this draws a card, has enchanted creature has protection from creatures, so essentially unblockable. It is unblockable against. And then a new card from the uh, precon, Mantle of the Ancients. Chant creature you control, so you can't chant other people's. So you have to have a creature on the battlefield to even cast this. That's probably why they say that. And when ETBs return any number target or, or enchantment, so these are the cards I said that um, interact favorably with both auras and enchantment. Cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to an enchanted creature. Bam. You play this. You play Mantle of Ancients, let's say on Galea. Take get everything back from the graveyard. Plop it back on. Even if you lose these things. Um, it's amazing. It gets plus one, plus one for each aura equipment attached to it. So it makes the uh, Voltron creature even bigger. All right. So we're going on to the equipment section here. Grab some more cards. The equipment are, you know, I, I like to have cheaper equipment because if it's on top of your deck, you want to just keep cycling through your deck. Again, 
Galea says on top of your deck, so if you have Swift of Boots on top, you can cast Swift of Boots. And if the card right below is Robo the Stars, you can cast that. You can keep chaining them um, as long as there's equipment or auras on top. But you have some uh, protect protection equipment. Of course, we're vulturing up our commander. We have a little protection here. Swift of Boots, good protection there. The reason we didn't have uh, Lightning Greaves is Swift of Boot gives hex proof, so you can still target your commander, equip your commander with other um, auras and equipment. Lightning Grease, it gives a creature shroud, so you can't like target your own creature. That's why we have only Swift of Boots. New card, Rubble Stars. I actually really like this uh, from the pre-con. Equip creature gets plus zero plus three, and then you pay one in white, equip creature phases out, and then equip one. So it gives a huge toughness boost, and it allows the creature to phase out. So if your commander's in danger, you can phase it out, and everything, all auras and equipment attached to it will phase out with it and will phase in with it, completely attached. So I love the use of phasing here. It makes me super happy they, they added it to equipment. Wing boots. This is actually a lot of protection because a quick creature has flying in ward four. So it takes an extra four extra uh, generic mana to even target your, uh, your uh, creature. Equip one. So it's mainly for the ward four, uh, but flying is a bonus because it makes it very evasive too. Those are our protection equipment here. We have, oh, Hammer and Zahn. I consider this you know, a, a power and, and um, protection equipment to pay for uh, generic. And whenever Hammer is on or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach that equipment to target creature you control. So it's awesome. So you have, hammer, you have Hammer is on on the battlefield. It doesn't even have to be equipped. This is just a static ability of Hammer of Nazan. And then equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has indestructible. So it gives your, your Voltron uh, creature indestructible. Now we have some ramp here, sort of animist here. Get, get some ramp, sort of hearth and home. People were like, oh, you just replace this with this. But I'm like, wow, well, just play both. Uh, get some rampy rampy, get some protection colors on there. It's super good. Then we have value town here, Agentum armor. Uh, six mana, quick creature gets plus six plus six. So this gets uh, Galea to 10 10. One more power, and you can two hit somebody. And then when a quick creature attacks, destroy target permanent. That's on attack and equip six. Wow, that's, I mean, it costs 12 mana to get on Galea, but there's some mana cheating, and Galea has cheating herself right here. If you cast it from the top of your library, the equip is free, so that's super good. Some more removal here. I consider this removal because it deals two damage, and it's this card advantage, so Sword of Fire and Ice. I love these swords. I only have these two swords because, you know, there's not a lot of room in this deck because you want to include other cool stuff like Shadow Sphere. Cheap to cast, again, cheap to cast. Uh, removes Hex with Indestructible. Gives your creature a little life-linking power. There. Belt of Giant Strength. This is super cool. I actually like this card. Um, I never actually got to draw this card and play this card yet, but I really like this card. Cre cre a crit creature has base power and toughness 10-10. So essentially it turns your creature into 10-10. Turns Galea right to 10-10. Sweet. Equip 10, which is insane, but it's free with Galea. The ability costs X less to activate X is the power of creature it targets. So essentially the difference between the creature's power and 10 would be equip cost. And the cool part is the you know these equipment will enhance your equipment auras will enhance your Voltron creature a lot. Let's put this down here. Right in a room, all these cards. All these, I know these are all the auras and equipment. We have Black Blade Reforge. Equip creature gets plus one plus one for each land you control, gets huge and out of control. Cost three to equip a legendary. Cost seven to equip non-legendary. I love that art, by the way. It's a Gideon spellbook art. Holy Avenger. So these are the uh, make your creatures big and attack and kill them with commander damage, or you know, with just damage from a random creature. Holy Avenger, new card from the precon. Creep creature has double strike. Bam. So if you have Belt of Strength on, and maybe just a Shadow Sphere, get to eleven eleven. Give it double strike. You can one hit KO. So that's why all about Voltron, one hit KOing uh, people. This is when a creature creature deals, deals combat damage, you may put an aura card from hand onto the battlefield attached to it. So that's a good way of cheating things, but the double strike is amazing right there. Super good. And I think Galea might be holding the Holy Avenger. Right? Maybe? Okay, it's hard to see. Okay. Anyways, Maul, the Skyclave. I love this card because it has an auto equip clause and gives flying and first strike and plus two pursue. All right, so those are equipment and aura cards here that is quite the pile right there now we have our support cards let's put this over here real quick some support cards as in shram 
as I talked about, when you have cast equipment aura or vehicle, we, we don't have vehicles, so don't worry about that. We draw a card right there. Arden, intrepid archaeologist. Beginning of combat, you may attach any number of auras and equipments you control from target permit or player. And let's read this carefully. At the beginning of combat in your turn, you may attach any number of auras and equipment you control to target permit or player. Now, it might sound weird. Uh, you can take all your equipment and put it on a player, all your auras, but remember we have these auras right here. Uh, where are they? Dark Student Mutation. If you're equipping something smaller at the beginning of the game, you're like, oh, they have a commander, it's worse, so let's just move it because I control that aura, right? Any number of auras equipment you control to target permanent player. So it's not um, so I can move around my Dark Student Mutation, Canvas Transformation, Prison of the Moon. So just remember that you can do that, it's pretty neat. Uh, Danitha Caption Paragon just gives you a, um, a cost reducer for ores and equipment and also has a bunch of keywords if you can equip her up. Armored Sky Hunter. When attacks, you know, look at top six cards uh, of your library. You may put equipment or equipment from among them onto the battlefield. And cool, it does the auto equip thing. If the equipment is put on the battlefield this way, you may attach it to the creature you control. So, ores and equipment. Halvar, God of Battle. Uh, creatures you control are enchanted, which means auras, and equipped have double strike. So that's cool. Just it's just static ability. And lets you move things at the beginning of your each combat. You may attach target aura equipment. Only one. Attach to a creature you control to target creature you control. So it's a little different than, than Arden. But Halvar actually comes with an equipment. And yes, I checked this out. If this is on top of your if Halvar's on top of your deck, you, you can cast the back end with Galea's ability. Sword of the Realms. Equip creature with plus two plus zero and has vigilance. So it's not not a giant bonus, but it's pretty cool. Whenever a quick creature dies, you return it to its owner's hand. So that really helps save them a bit. But how of our super good. Heavenly Blade Master. When ETBs, you may attach any number of auras and equipments you control to it. So auto equipping to Heavenly Blade Master. And other creatures you control get plus one plus zero for each aura equipment attached to Heavenly Blade Master. So a lot of aura equipment synergies right here, six of them. Open the armory. Search your library for order equipment, so that's a little tutor right there. Pure Steel Paladin. This is only equipment here, no aura, but it makes equip cost zero. With, so a gentle armor and the swords, everything get huge discounts. As I mentioned, Stoneforge Mystic, search for equipment. Here, we actually have Nizan himself. I've been waiting to play this card, so because I wanted to play with Hammer and Nizan in a Bant deck. Usually my equipment decks are Boros decks, but this is Bant, so now I get to play hammer Nizan with his hammer and when it enters the battlefield you can search uh, your library for an equipment card and reveal it any equipment but if you reveal a card named hammer Nizan this way put it on the battlefield so it auto casts hammer Nizan hammers on auto like auto equips so Nizan's really good with his hammer otherwise put the card in your hand whenever a quick creature you control attacks you may tap target creature defending player control so don't forget that little text here but Nizan, I would definitely fetch for a hammer. Goes right in the battlefield, auto clips the Nizan or whoever, you know, makes the Nizan indestructible. Sagarda, so I include Sagarda because uh, she doesn't have any word aura equipment on it, but Sagarda has the magical word hexproof. Uh, a lot of people play Sagarda as a Voltron commander, but hexproof makes it super good, so you don't have to worry about target removal on Sagarda. I mean, you do, have, you do have to worry about board wipes, but and then spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to sack permanent. So play, they play in all's dust. Sorry. All right, now we have what we call top deck manipulation. Brainstorm the classical top deck manipulation. You could just brainstorm, uh, draw three cards, tack, stack two equipments and auras, run on tops, so and you can cast them back to back. I would recommend holding brainstorm if you have turn one, turn two, turn three. Cast Galea first, then do some brainstorming afterwards. This is a card I actually almost forgot. I built the deck and I'm like, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I really feel like I'm forgetting something. Hmm. Oh, I'm forgetting Light and Tutor. This literally puts it right on top of your deck, uh, Artifact or Enchantment. Like, this is the best card for Galea. I almost forgot, I can't believe it. Sensei's Divine Top lets you manipulate top card of your deck. Scroll Rack lets you put cards from your hand on top of your deck. Okay, so we have card draw. So now we're done with manipulating top of your deck. We're just going through general good stuff. You know, the other stuff the deck needs. Esper Sentinel. It's actually really good in this deck because you can enhance Esper Sentinel's power and make it above one. So you say, do you want to pay the three, pay the four, pay the five? It's pretty neat. Code Eye Selkie is actually in the precon. 
Uh, I didn't buy the pre-con. I bought cards from the pre-con because I actually own this card. But, you know, I want to give it a try. A lot of people do play islands. So you can always do, uh, you know, island walk them. And what deals combat damage, you may draw that many cards. You get Cold Eyes Selkies power up really high. Draw a bunch of cards. Keep the cards flowing. Speaking of keep the cards flowing. Rhystic Study. Everybody knows what that does. You have some removal. That's just spells. Uh, swords. We always have to play swords in a white deck. It's so efficient. Even though it doesn't fit the theme of Galea. So efficient not to include. Cyclonic Rift. Same difference. I mean, same story. Super efficient. Beast Within. Our enchantments can't disable everything. Beast Within can target anything. So I gotta do that there. Piece of dirt here. <laughs> board wipes. Our enchantments aren't board wipes. Supreme Verdict. Just general good board wipe and bant. Actually more in Azorius, but it's in our bant deck. And they have an, a board wipe called Winds of Wrath. Super cool. Destroy creatures that are enchanted. Most creatures aren't enchanted unless you play against a enchantment deck then you know it does nothing against that deck but it does something against the other players and star creatures are enchanted they can't be generated so those are board wipes removal card draw now we on to protection flawless maneuver i love this card every time i play a equipment aura commander I always have flawless maneuver because it's free with the commander it just makes things indestructible keeps things alive it's various protection Again, we have very vulnerable creatures with auras on them. Keep them alive. Teferi's Protection helps that a lot. Graveyard Hate, Scavenging Ooze. It has no, no synergy with the deck, but it is a piece of Graveyard Hate. Gotta have it. Sun Titan. Our auras are cheap. Our auras die. We get it back with Sun Titan. Also with Balagate Recovery. Every green deck of mine has this. It's so good. It's just a regrowth. Get things back. Um, it can be played as a land. Right there. So we have our ramp here. So let's look at this. Secure Tribe Elder. I put this in here because it is a creature. It can be equipped, enchanted. If you don't need lands, you could just, it's, you know, it's a 1-1. One, one. You could do stuff with it. That's that. We have Smothering Tithe here. Playing white, got to play Smothering Tithe. If you notice, we don't have Nature's Lore, Three Visits, any of that stuff. We're using our enchantments as ramp. So we, But we still have Smothering Tithe because that's just so good not to have. Soul Ring, Arcane Signet. So good not to have as well right there our lands so land slot usually i just go over quickly but it's actually important this, these lands we have our rainbow lands we have but we have fetch lands i didn't include every fetch land because you know i didn't want to crank up the budget too high but we have our fetch lands we help shuffle for galea right here the top of our deck if it's a if it's not an aura equipment we can shuffle it and hopefully get you know cross our fingers say is there one there if there is bam we did our thing so we have the three Bant Fetch Lands, then we have Fable Passage, Prismatic Vista, Evolving Wilds, Terramorph Expanse, all the Fetch Lands, a lot of Fetch Lands, so we can continue to shuffle our top of our deck. And now we just go through regular stuff. We have the Shock Lands, the Check Lands, Battle Bond Lands, all Bant. We do have Scattered Groves, Irrigated Farm Lands, the ETB Tap Lands that can be fetched. Uh, with our fetch lands but the important part about it is they cycle so just in case you want to clear the top of your deck that's why they're included yavamaya urza saga usually fetches sensei divine top there's only three targets soul ring sensei divine top and shadow sphere but the top hall of heliad's generosity i've never played these two cards together and academy ruins so that's pretty neat get your commitments and artifacts back and some basics all right that is the deck. Let's see what kind of value we can get by checking out the top of our deck here. Boom, let's shuffle this deck up. If you enjoy this deck tech and you want to support the channel, give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos. I have the full deck list and TCG player affiliate link in the description below. So we're gonna shuffle this deck up and we'll be right back. All right, we are back. Got my dice, turn number one. Let's see how, what, see how we do with Galea. I am excited to play Auras because I feel like Auras are, they, they push them a little bit because of the two for one nature. But uh, with Galea and the card advantage engine, helps mitigate that. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Okay. We have one, two. Remember, Balagate Recovery can be a land. Arcane Signet's land. Utopia Sprawl. We got lucky because we do have a forest in our hand. You just got to remember that it can only chant a forest. So, but you can use this brainstorm, put it back on your top of your deck whenever you get a force or shuffle it away, hopefully. Okay. 
So we could ramp turn one. We could play Bally as land. Play Arcane Signet turn two. Zyre Orchard turn three. Um, turn three, we play our commander. Sweet, and see what's up. And we have these two equipment. Or this equipment, this aura. Rope of Stars, Rune of Might. Sweet. All right, we're starting. Good start here. Of course, we'd rather have this on top of our deck, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay. I turn one still. Boom. Scattered Groves. Okay, we, we can put Utopia Spot on this, but this comes to play tapped. So, hmm. We could just make the sacrifice, put this into play tapped here. Right? Check that out. And then, because we, we don't want to play this until very later, until we make up our mind. All right? Then we could untap it here, turn two. To Black Blade Reforged. This is really good here, too. Okay, so what we could do is essentially play Exotic Orchard, right? Because I, I guess the only reason we play this is just because this always comes to play tapped. So, but we can always shock in Temple Garden. Say no one's playing green, we shock in Temple Garden. We can always tap this, put Utopia Spall in Shattered Grove, Scattered Grove, tap this, play Arcane Signet. Essentially, we end up where we, the same place is playing our King Signet on turn two with the Topia Sprawl. Um, so we play this, we name uh, Blue, since we got uh, the Celestial Lands here. And then we play our King Signet, then, or we play our King Signet, then enchant with Utopia Sprawl. Same difference. So we got our double ramp here on turn two. Ran out cards, of course. Okay, turn three. Here. Juvenile Springs, that's our blue. So we'll take that. Again, we're delaying the decision on Bellget Recovery. But if, if we have a point to play it here, this would be a good point to play it right here because we got one, two, three, four mana. We might have a one drop, but we already used our one drop on top of the deck. So I highly doubt it. So I believe we'll just delay the decision some more. I'll play Rejuvenating Springs here. Actually, no. I think what we want to do is because we want to play Black Blade Reforged. Uh, on a later turn, because like if you look at this, right, you got one, two, three, four mana. I guess you could do these. Okay, let's do that. I know playing mana is hard. Let's just play Rejuvenating Springs. Tap everything here. Uh, white, blue, green, blue. Play our commander, Galea. And then for sake of the show, we're just going to flip the top card. Brainstorm, that is not an aura equipment. It is a one drop. Uh, if Glea had the, um, uh, it's not Kite Car. It's that, uh, uh, I forgot which one it was. Elsha. Has Elsha ability, then you can play Brainstorm, I believe. But Glea does not. All right. Yeah, they've been exploring a lot of top of the deck commanders, which is really cool. Really like that. Good way to get card advantage. You don't actually get to draw the card. So it's like, it's like half a card draw. So turn four. We'll just draw our brainstorm here. Reveal the top card. Halvar. Okay. So let's just wait for this decision here. We could just play this. Halvar. So what happens? Halvar is an equipment on the back. So you can actually cast the equipment side of Halvar right there. Let's put this in. Sword of the Realms. Right there. Quick creature. Plus two plus zero and has vigilance. Glare right, has vigilance. It's our, it's our only creature. Um, when a creature dies, return it to its owner's hand, so it's a good way to protect. So just, you gotta pretend like that's what the top card is. So we'll play Sword of Realms. Glaive will trigger, we'll auto-equipped. Boom. So now Glaive has a 6-4. Oh, we gotta flip the card, card again. Winged Boots, ooh, that's sweet. All right, so instead of playing stuff out of our hands, we'll just continue, uh, continue the fun. I dropped my land off the table. There, there you go. Wing Boots. Ward 4 helps a little protection too. Cast that. Now equip. Now Glea has plus 2 plus 0. Flying and double vigilance. We'll go here. Enlightened Tutor. Okay. So seeing we're not going to land soon. Uh, I'm just going to drop the Belged Recovery as Belged Sanctuary. Right here. Enlightened Tutor is really cool. Here, and no, you can't play off the top of the deck. You know, it's very, another one drop that's very tempted to. Uh, we can still brainstorm back. Uh, but again, brainstorm back any of these 
or, or his equipment take three mana. So let's play Balagad. We'll say go. I would not cast Enlightened Tutor on. Uh, I guess I, I keep thinking I could play it from the top, but I can't turn five here. I mean, you can only sack Galea to deal six combat, six, six, six command damage somewhere. Let's say we do. Boom. We just attack. Deal six damage to our uh, commander damage. We'll draw our Enlightened Tutor. Boom. Sea of Clouds. Okay. So what you can do is Enlightened Tutor. You get Enlightened Tutor for any um, aura. Well, I guess any artifact or enchantment, but it's going to be... I'll, I'll pick an aura equipment because I have Glay on the battlefield. And play an, an auto equip. We could brainstorm back a bunch of these cards, play an auto equip. Like uh, Black Blade Reforged. We don't need the Rune of Might auto equip because it just it's an aura. Robo Stars would be cool to auto equip. Black Blade Reforged is really good. Okay. So let's start by... Uh, let's find our, our sweetest thing that we can get. All right. So... Hmm. Got to be mana efficient here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana here. Now remember, we play Brainstorm and Black Bridge Forge. That's three mana. Play Enlightened Tutor. That's uh, one mana. Four. Because we definitely want to equip Black Bridge Forge and deal uh, extra five damage with Galea right there. So it's three, four, whatever we want. So let's just do a Lightning Tutor first before we even think about anything else. Tap this, do a Lightning Tutor. We'll reset the top of our deck here. I think we want to do that little, the giant belt that's really hard to equip. That's a new card. Turns our, our Galea into 10-10, which is super sweet. I think that's like plus six, plus six, so... Can't, can't deny how powerful it is. Holy Avenger is good, double strike too. So this is kind of like plus six, plus six as well. Hmm, cost three. I think the belt costs two. All right, so it's cheaper. So I think we can do this and play Black Wave Forge. I think we can knock somebody out by doing this here. All right, so we'll do this. We'll just shuffle our deck up here. Bam, 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 randomize the deck here. Bada bing, bada boom. Sun Petal Grove. Well, no, no, sorry, oops. This goes first, but we're also gonna play that too. Belt of Giant Strength, and then we'll see our Sun Pelt Grove here. Okay, this belt here, we'll have the um, Quip Creature has base power and toughness 1010, so 1010, plus the plus two plus zero, flying. There we go, so now it's a 1210. Super good, Ward four, it's very hard to kill. Um, so what we do is plan to use our Brainstorm here can brainstorm right here we'll draw three cards one two three rankers sweet so what we do is we could just stack our cards this way um, uh, ranker black blade reforge right here so now we show black blade reforge oh we gotta cast our brainstorm here so light to your brainstorm yep okay tap all the correct mana now we have Black Blade Reforge. That rank are super lucky. We'll just play this. We'll auto equip it here. Uh, and then we'll just review our ranker that we just really brainstorm back. See how powerful brainstorm is in this deck. We'll equip here, auto equip. Bam, we have these cards here, but let's just see what could damage we could do. So with Belt of Giant Strength, 10-10. Let's keep track of uh, Galea's power here. Five. 10 plus two, right, so 12. Here, Wing Boots doesn't do any extra. Black Bay is you know, plus one, plus one for each land you, you control. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So another five, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, we're so close. So we are so close, 19, not, not 21. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, well, we'll just, uh, the person we attacked the first time, we could just Boom, they have six commander damage. They're pretty dead right there. Remember, Galea has Ward 4 happening here. And if Galea dies, it goes back to our hand with the uh, Sword of the Realms. So we'll just take another turn. We killed a player, turn five, sweet. You know, they're probably sad, but we're not. We oh, show this card here. This is a shuffle, this is sweet. All right, turn six, draw a card. Top of our deck, Yavimaya, more lands, no problem. 
So what we do is, oh, we got scroll rack here. That can help out. So let's just uh, pretend our Galea is still alive for some reason or not. Most likely dead, but let's just pretend. We'll play our scroll rack here, right there. We'll play our flooded strand here, shuffle the top of our deck. We'll say uh, scroll rack cost two. Let's tap this one. That's, that's very un in inefficient tapping those cards. We'll tap the correct lands, this one and this one. Right, and then we'll, we'll tap the Rejuvenating Springs to actually scroll rack. Exile any number of cards from your library, from your hand face down. So we'll just exile these two cards face down. We will take these cards, put them in our hand. Bam, bam, okay. We'll do this. Well, you can't, you can't look, I think you can't look in between resolving this, right? I think so. Okay, you do this, put this in, back on top. Here, boom, like that. You've skull racked. Bam, so now what we'll do is reveal this. We're like, oh, surprise, ruin my, Actually, we want to do this the other way. Oh, almost messed up. Robot Stars first. Because Ruin Might will draw the card, will draw the Robot Stars and be like, oops. We'll auto equip Robot Stars here. And then what we'll do is we'll just tap this and this, and we will enchant Rune of Might onto uh, the Robot Stars since it's the easiest one to uh, re equip. Reveal the top card. It's a land, but we don't want to fetch it away because we're going to draw this next turn. Anyways, with this rune, plus one, plus zero, with this robe, and with the extra land here, I believe we are at 21 power. Let's just count it up one more time here. Remember, it says flying vigilance, trample, uh, double trample, because you get trample here and trample there. That belt of giant strength is 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, black Ray 4 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Boom. You go like, boom, tack them, kill another player. And then you're good to go. And then you have to deal with the last player. The last player is the one that's going to be a nightmare and it's going to be impossible to kill them. But if you can, kill them. And if they, they do kill Galea, they got to pay four extra because of wing boots. Remember the ward four. Um, and then remember, sword of the, the realms gets Galea back to the hand. Play without playing the um, commander attacks. And remember, also remember that basically when, if Galea dies, uh, all these equipment, this aura is attached to this equipment, this equipment, this equipment, and this equipment will all stay, rank or come back to your hand, then you have to pay the steep cost of re-equipping things up. Uh, if you can equip Black Blade Reforged, Spell of Giant Strength becomes free. So that's cool. All right, anyways, if you enjoy this video, enjoy like, you know, equipment, um, or as Voltron, I love Voltron for some reason, it's so fun. Uh, Commanders, give this video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos. Again, I have the deck list in the description below, along with the TCG Player Affiliate link. And so you can help support the channel, this is super fun, let's just look, let's peek, peek. Secure Tribal, there's nothing. Bam, Kenra's Transformation. And remember, you have, now, now if you draw Misty Rainforest next turn, you have two shuffle effects, and that'd be super cool. And even if you didn't kill the second player because they blocked, you trampled, trampled over a lot, and you just kill them again next turn. Anyways, um, thank you for listening to me ramble. And as always, have a wonderful day.